back to a brand new episode of Mastering Programming. In today's episode, I'll show you how you can save things into a database using Velo, just like this, where you can enter some text and click submit and actually have it saved. And to show you that it did get saved, I'm just gonna go to my database, manage content, names, and you'll find out that we just added it right now. There we go. Now this will be a very useful tutorial, I will show you the code, I will show you how to set this up and I will even show you how you can set up a database. If this is something that you are interested in, please make sure you continue watching this video and leave a like as well. Let's get started. Welcome back guys, now as you can see I've got a blank page here. And before I begin, I just want to make sure that you have this setting on as well. If you just go to dev mode at the top here, yours, if yours is off, if yours is on, sorry, if yours is off, make sure that you do turn it on. Otherwise, you will not have access to the code base over here and you have to do it. It's completely for free. All you need to do is just hover over dev mode and then turn this on if it's off. For me, it's already on, so I'll not be clicking on this. Now, the first thing that we're going to be doing is we're actually going to start adding some input. So this includes something like uh, first name and last name. These are the two things that I'll be doing. So we can scroll down to input and I'm just going to drag down this and then I'm going to duplicate it and I'm going to create one underneath as well. We're also going to be adding a button. So when the button is pressed, we can actually save this onto a data set or a collection or a database or whatever you want to call it. I'll just drag this like that. You can see this is very simple. There we go. For here, I'm going to change this. Uh, actually, we can keep this as add your name. And over here, we can just change it into add your age. There we go. For this button, let's change the text from saying button to saying submit. There you go. Very simple, nothing complicated. We just want to save these two fields into our data set. Now what we're going to do now is we're also going to be creating a new data set. So I'm going to click on this add button. I'm going to scroll down to content manager and I'll click on new collection. I'm going to call it names. Obviously you can call it whatever you, you have or if you already have a database, don't worry about this step. We're also going to keep it as multiple items. And I'll click on create. I'm going to wait for this to load and then I'm going to go ahead and also do some more settings to it. If we click on collection settings over here, you can see that the name, uh, that, it, that the collection ID is names and that's what we're going to be using in our entire code. Then we're going to click on permissions and privacy. For now, I just want to set it up so that anyone can do anything. Obviously, if you're going to publish your website, make sure that you have the settings that you're satisfied with. For example, if you only want members to add content, then you can set it up like this. For now, I'm just going to click on anyone and I'll click on save. There we go. Now let's create, um, let's leave, let's create a first name, name. There we go. And we're going to create another field for age. By the way, this same way will work if you have anything else. So if you have a geolocation, if you have a number, if you have whatever, just create it the same way that I'm creating it right now. Great. Now what I'll do is I'll actually add this database over here. Now you don't actually have to do this, but I'm going to do it just so that you can visualize what we're doing. I'm going to click on data set. I'm going to put this like key like this settings choose collection and I'm going to cl click on the one that has names which is the one that we just created and I'll keep it as read and write there we go now the idea here is that once someone fills in the name and the age once they click submit the fields that we created in the database will be fulfilled or filled with the information that we added here so let's have a look on how we can actually do this now, in previous tutorials, I realized from the comments that I usually tend to copy and paste. So in this tutorial, I'm going to try and explain a little bit more before I just copy and paste <laughs> the code that I have. If I 
open or if I just click on this bottom bar over here, you realize that it's actually not coming. Oh, there we go. That we, you realize that here we've got something that we call an editor. And an editor allows us to put in some code and it gets run or it gets ran. And basically what that does is that it allows us to put some commands or some actions that the computer or in our case Wix will perform based off of our, or our code basically instructions or commands. That's the easiest way to explain it. Now to give you some more explanation, I'm just going to remove this text over here and I'll explain what those codes do or what, how code runs in general. In this scenario, VLO goes in order. For example, in line one will be performed and then line two. For example, right now, if I type in console.log, This line will be printed or will be performed uh, before this line. And all this does is that it basically prints the word first and this one will print the word second. Now to run your code, all you need to do is basically click on preview and you realize straight away that we get first printed and then second in order just how I explained. There you go. Now this was very simple and we're going to use this in order to save this information as well. Now if this is your first time coding, do not worry, it's really easy and we're just going to do this in like five lines of code. It will not be difficult and you can basically just copy what I'm writing, but I just thought I would explain how it works as well. Now what we're going to do is we're going to remove this and we're going to go on the submit button and over here on the right side we've got an, a button here that says on click. If we click on it and then click enter, you can see that now we have something called function and then button one click. Basically what happens is that whenever a person clicks on this button, whatever is inside those zigzaggy brackets will run. For example, if you want to replicate that code that we did, what I need to do is I can come over here inside of those brackets and I can type in console.log. And then inside of here, we will say first. And now if I click on preview, you realize that the code doesn't run automatically. Instead, it will only run after someone clicks on submit. So let's wait until this loads and give it a go. If I click on submit now, you can see that it prints first. Let's go back to the editor. And now that we know that once this button clicks, whatever's inside of here will run, we can actually start on writing some code that will run once this button is pressed. What we want to do is what we want to capture the first, the name and the age. To do this, I'm going to create, I'm going to type in let name, or actually we can just type in the name is equal to, I'll put a dollar sign with a W and then two brackets. Inside of here, I'll put a hashtag and then I'll type in the name after the hashtag, in this case, input one. So I'll put input one dot value like this. I'm going to copy this and I'm going to paste it right underneath. And this one, we will call it age. And in our scenario, this is input two, as you can see, there we go. And now what happens is that if I print this, dot log, let's say name, it's going to get the name or whatever the person enters here. So if I click on preview one more time, and say David, and then click submit, you can see that we get David printed. And that's how we get access to these two fields. So now let's go ahead and remove this and actually finally put in that code that will allow us to actually uh, update our database. Before we do anything, let's create the actual sort of like field that we will be putting. So I'll simply say let to insert equal to, I'll put a bracket just like this. Inside of here, we need to pass in the name or the thing in our database. So we can go here. And we're going to be passing name and age, exactly how they're spelled like this. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to put name 
and I'm going to say that it is equal to name that we're getting over here like this and I'll be putting a comma and then we'll be putting age and then we'll be passing age there we go and that's all we need so now we have this object that we're going to pass in order to save the database and we can just pull this up like that now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here and I'll say import Wix data from Wix data I'll come over here and I'll put type in Wix data dot insert I'll open a bracket inside of here we're going to be putting the name of our data set in our case it's simply just names I'll put a bracket and then I'll pass in the object that we're printing uh, sorry that we're saving I'll then go over here and I'll type in dot then and I'll type in another one up here I'll put item like this and inside of here I'm actually going to be passing or I'm going to basically just log the item that we're passing dot log item I'll then come over here and we obviously want to make sure that there's no errors or if at least if there's an error we know what that error is and then I'll put catch and then another bracket ERR just show for error like this and now I'll type in console.log error there we go so now let's go ahead and run this and see if we actually managed to save anything in the database I'm going to click on preview I'm going to type in David over here I'm going to put in my age I'll click on submit and you can see that we got the database with the stuff that we returned in fact if I click back to editor and if we clicked on content manager collections names We're gonna find out that we did in fact save David in 22. Let's just do another example just for fun. And in our case, we're going to put something like bullets one submit. If I click on back to editor and click on content manager, manage content, names. Again, we do have bullets and one. There we go. So we just managed to click insert right now. Now, what if you want to let the user know that this actually worked? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to add text over here. And for now, I'm just going to keep it as success. And I'm just going to put it as a green. And instead of console.log, what we can say is dollar sign bracket hashtag and this is text 35, so I'll just put text 35 dot show and here we can just click hidden. So now if I preview this, originally success is not here. I'm just going to type anything. I'll click on submit. Once it is correct, we should be <laughs> getting um, this to show, but it didn't. So I think that's because I forgot to add a bracket. Let's do this again. Anything, submit. There we go, success. So there you go, we actually did finish this tutorial. Now if you like this, if you learn how to save things into a database, please make sure that you do subscribe to this YouTube channel, leave a like, or 
leave a comment on how I can improve this channel or what you actually need help with. Thanks so much for watching and have a good day.